This is the Chop It Up Show. Guys, we are breaking down business and culture through the entrepreneurial lens. Whether it's million dollar deals or whether it's reselling kicks on StockX, mm -hmm. we are here to help you with your hustle, whatever it may be. We talked about the potential for a correction in the economy. This episode, we're gonna talk about how to beat it. Mm. Just keep, beat it. I keep feeling like I have to sneeze, by the way, so okay. be ready for that. Get it out, get it out. Make sure you write that notation. You know if you yawn and tap your head and rub your belly, you'll get the sneeze out? No. Oh, <laughs> you considered it though, you considered it. We talked about the potential for a market recession mm -hmm. or correction, whatever you want to call it. It's around the corner. There's going to be a bloodbath. How can you make some money, mm. make some bread while the uh, bread is breaking down, yes. so to speak? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, we're going to get into deal talk. And specifically, I want to explore this idea <coughs> of buying real estate. Mm -hmm. Some people buy and flip. Some people buy and hold. Either way, there's no right or wrong way. There's plenty of ways to win. Yep. Let's break down some real estate in 2019. Okay, so Brandon, just for context for the viewers, we have some investments that we've made separately and we also have some investments that we've made together. Yes. Um, I know you're just about to get into real estate. I'm mm -hmm. already in real estate. Mm -hmm. Would love to hear what are your plans for 2019 with real estate? So I think in terms of real estate to focus on a location, especially a location you know. So when I was back home for the holidays in 2018, I had a chance to see two people flipping houses um, in Cleveland. So it was my childhood friend and then Mama Deeks, hey. Mama Bryant, riding around hustling, getting it. Okay. Uh, super proud of her. And so I actually understand Cleveland already, grew up there. She's right. telling me a lot of history. And then now I'm focusing on the pricing of buying the properties, usually out of foreclosure or something that's under 15,000. Secondly is just like the, um, the construction and also any of the people who are gonna be rehabbing it. Right. And then lastly, the exit opportunity. Who's gonna be selling as a retailer or as an investors right. who are buying the property. So that's kind of where I'm looking and I think you can take that model and you can apply it to any like hometown that you're from or any suburb or inner city. I love it, look. Um, I love that you're getting into it. Just before, I have some thoughts in this space as well, mm -hmm. but because it's like the majority of what I've been doing all last year. Uh, but I'm curious, why are you deciding to get in right now? Mm -hmm. You could have been in a long time ago, you could be in next year, but you're deciding right now. I'm deciding right now because you said this before, I make a lot, of, Brandon makes most of his The bulk money. of his bread on Brandon deal. <laughs> yeah. So since I made the bulk of my money in like marketing and stuff that's just like can be dried up in a recession, ding, 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 I'm ding, now ding, recession ding. proofing my opportunity. So I'm definitely making sure my um, opportunity to borrow is up high mm. in terms of just like limits. I'm also making sure I'm trying to buy these houses with cash. I don't necessarily want any debt on my books right now. And then also the thing I'm trying to do is have cash flowing assets, right? At the end of the day, money is the best employee, right? So you work really Ooh. hard to get money and then you can have that money work for you. I'm so mad that you said that before I said it because my <laughs> homie just told me about that. My guy, it must be a my real guy. estate thing. It must be a real estate thing because my childhood friend from real estate said money is your best employee. It wake up when you wanted to wake up. It does exactly what you want to do. And it, it don't never call off. Sleeps. It never sleeps. Right. Money, and it, once you get money working for you, that's when you have the opportunity to expand into just all kinds of realms. So, so let me build off of this idea of real estate in 2019. Mm -hmm. So I'm really personally excited that you as my business partner, friend and brother are getting into real estate. Um, I've had some crazy learning experiences uh, with real estate. So my first deal, um, I was gonna buy a three unit property, mm -hmm. right? I was gonna you know, buy it and have my parents live in one unit and rent out the other two, right? And then I discovered something that blew my fucking mind, okay? Mm -hmm. Someone told me, he said, John, why are you buying this three unit deal? And I said, oh, because I can afford it. And he said, you're buying based on a budget. You're not buying based on the deal. So he said, I want you to operate as if cash weren't an obstacle because that'll get you to stretch beyond what your current means are and that'll get you hunting for the best possible deal. The point is, okay, I, like you, it was actually, actually, this is this is gonna be a fun thing for the show. <laughs> I had a meeting with Gary, Gary V, right, in 2017. I want you guys to fucking loop it up right here. You've got, you know, at least from what I heard and the reason I'm giving you that advice is I think you've got stuff figured out mm -hmm. other than when the football field turns into a hockey arena. Right, because I haven't been to that. That's right. But he said, right now you're on good footing. 
when shit gets slippery and when shit hits the fan, mm -hmm. like you've never been through that professionally because you're too young. So like, can you, like that's when people eat shit. So like, can you die, you know, can you become recession proof was, yeah. the, was the main idea. And that was a point that I realized, wow, the bulk of my income comes from doing talks, comes from doing, you know, hosting podcasts for people. All that shit goes away yep. when the recession comes, all of it. And what doesn't go away is good old fashioned real income generating real estate. People always look for a place to live and they're always running at the highest rates right now. I think the takeaway for the viewer here is whether you wanna be high risk or low risk, it doesn't matter. Just find an asset class that works for you. Put, learn it, understand it, put your money in and watch as it rewards you when your money mm -hmm. starts working for you. Yeah, guys, we have to move now. This is the opportunity before the market corrects or the downturn. You wanna be in an anticipation position on the balls of your feet, ready to attack and go aggressively for the opportunity and have cash in your hand. So if you live in a small town, you can look right in your backyard. If you live in a primary city, Miami, New York, SF, there is a cash flowing, affordable real estate market within two hours of any major city in the country. I invite you to take a look. You will not be disappointed. And you might find a market you never even thought about uh, that you can invest in and get started. Exactly, John. You can go home and be the LeBron of your city, put the city on your back, and have financial prosperity come from the things that you are investing your time and your money in. So go check it out and let us know how it go. As you go and you search for markets or properties, send them on in, because who knows, we may even invest. This is Deal Talk after all, mm -hmm. okay? Happy hunting, guys. All right, so not everyone can actually have the opportunity to put down a down payment for a house or buy it outright with cash. True. So we need to figure out other opportunities for people to have access to cash. Mm -hmm. They need to probably borrow or have some type of a lender. So let's, let's jump into that in our next segment, which is hashtag. So we've been talking about investing in real estate. Now, mm -hmm. you need money to make money. Okay, yes. now if you have your own cash stashed away, great, you can deploy that. If you don't and you still wanna get in the game, you're gonna have to borrow money. Now you can either get a personal loan from friends and family or now in 2019 world, there's all mm -hmm. kinds of apps and services that are popping yeah. up that are facilitating your ability to get some money. Brandon, you know a few of them? Yes, and one, and these are like peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms. You have like Lending Club, but then the one that we wanna focus on today is Prosper, where you have the opportunity to get a loan between zero to almost 30,000 plus dollars from your peers. And they get a chance to earn some of that interest. Mm -hmm. And you get a chance, especially if you don't have the best credit score, to have access to capital and you can put that to work. And one thing to know on this kind of loan is it is unsecured, meaning mm -hmm. it does not go officially recorded on a deed anywhere. It cannot be found on public records. Uh, it's kind of a side agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and the shared economy really makes this thing possible. Mm -hmm. There's a network of all kinds of individuals. They pool their money and then that money is assigned to someone mm -hmm. who's deemed credible enough to borrow. Uh, and then you can use that capital for whatever you'd like. You can yeah. use it to, take, to buy a fucking yacht. I don't yeah. recommend that. <laughs> I recommend you buy some income generating assets. Yes, and I even touch on another point from the investor perspective here. If you were to invest in a lending club or a prosper and be one of the people who actually lend the money mm. to the other folks, you have to understand like when you're investing, you're investing in like a, basically a long term loan. So if you invest in something and it's three years, you have to wait three years to get your whole principal back. You will get interest payments every month, but you have to wait that entire situation. So some people actually do this instead of investing in the financial markets, right. because it's they believe in peers, they wanna help people out, but they also wanna make some interest slowly over time. Yeah, so pretty much the, in this edition of math, it's the whole idea of peer-to-peer -peer lending. You can either be a borrower and mm -hmm. a recipient of the capital in the peer-to-peer -peer economy, or you can be, as Brandon said, someone who decides to put up the money and mm -hmm. get your dollars to work that way. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool because on this, this particular episode, there's this theme of getting your money to work for you. Yeah. Right, so whether it's you flip a house, buy an apartment complex, or you loan it out to your peers, no shortage of ways for your money to work for you. Mm -hmm. um, and also, mind you, 
If you have a little bit of cash and you do want to lend it out, the alternative in the bank is you're going to be earning 0.006%. Anyways, yeah. So you're not going to be making shit, in other words. <laughs> you're not going to be making any money, or you Fun can take that bread and mattress. loan it out and make some money on the money. You know what sure. I'm saying? John, I agree. Real estate isn't cheap. So if you don't have the capital, you don't have the opportunity, you can go to a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform and it can be uncollateralized and you can have somewhat of an affordable interest rate to have an opportunity to invest some capital. Speaking of interest rate, it is absolutely critical to understand the interest rate. It is essentially what it costs you to borrow money. Mm. Okay, so if you borrow from a traditional lender like a bank, you're looking at something like four to five percent interest rate. Very low. And if they offer you a long term, mm -hmm. what we call a fixed term, you're gonna wanna take it because I don't know about you, but I want cheap money for as long as I can get it. Yes. Now, the reality of a peer to peer lending platform, more likely than not, it's gonna be a higher interest rate because you're in a riskier situation. So if I'm lending out to someone who's riskier, I need to be rewarded, and that's reflected in a higher interest payment going mm -hmm. towards the lender. So there's two types of interest rate. There's fixed and there's adjustable. So fixed, you're locked in for a long period of time. Adjustable, it's gonna vary every three to five years. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is that a low rate is a low rate. So if you can get it for as long as you can, great. If you're borrowing at a high rate, don't get married to it, just date it a little while, and when the interest rate comes down, that's when you lock it in, okay? Okay, you gonna make some money? All right then, let us know. <laughs> Hashtag math, send us in your preferred apps to make a little bread and save a little dough. All right guys, we're getting into On The Rise, where we cover who's up and coming, who's about to blow. You heard it here first on 137 p.m., folks. Who do we got today? Yes, we are usually talking about people with amazing personal brands. Today's personal brand is Q Mike. Hopefully we'll throw a little something up for you guys to check out. <laughs> Q Mike is an amazing content creator. Originally started as Mr. Levitation, where he took pictures of himself just like defying gravity, if you will. And now he's turned into like a full blown content creator doing videos in essentially like a small production company. And one of our producers was just talking about how he has a ton of ads. And he's like, what about this guy just posting a shit ton of ads? And I wanted to defend him from being an ad poster myself. Right. <laughs> And I wanna say we are production companies. Like if someone, if VaynerMedia only put out ads, that makes sense because VaynerMedia is a production company. But when a, a person is doing it, it seems like, oh man, that's all you do. And it's like, yo, this is like my actual job. I don't come to a young job and say, why are you, man, you pouring milkshakes? Or like right, right, right. you're putting up groceries or you, all you do is write in Excel. I don't come to your job and say that. Damn, Brandon's got something to say. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. That was Back a to our regular schedule program. Rant. So, so, but let me just chime <laughs> in there because dissecting Q Mike has prompted this debate of how many sponsored posts is too many sponsored posts. I'll just say straight up, when you see me do a branded deal, it doesn't feel fucking authentic. It's just me <laughs> fucking shaving randomly with a Gillette blade. Like, it just feels weird, it feels cheesy. Like, I cannot pull it off. You've built a reputation for yourself, you're able to pull it off. But, you know, it's a good overlying macro question. As mm -hmm. influencers gain more prominence and absorb more of the marketing dollars, how much is too much? Can you be a walking billboard mm. or can you be an authentic partner to brands that you care about? And I have another point, and this is on the recession side of things. Again, if you are a content creator and a majority of your money comes through brand deals, this would be a great time to start producing your own proprietary series and content mm. so that you can have something to fall back on if Gillette or Marriott or whoever is not knocking at your door anymore. Right. Because right? look, Brandon makes the bulk of his bread on Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No, no, but, but seriously, <laughs> this is a discussion that we had. We said, yo, you know what? Um, you know, too much of my income comes from branded content, because I also do branded deals, but more mm -hmm. on the podcast and TV side, you on the media side. So we came together, we each identified that this was a weakness for us. Mm -hmm. We teamed up and we created the Chop It Up show in my spare bedroom in Harlem. Yes. And we were able to build that to the point where we were able to flip it. And, and th now this we're is on 137 We have quite a few folks you count more than two hands in here. You know what I'm saying? Taping the show. Look, the takeaway here is influencer marketing is on the rise. Mm -hmm. You need to get you some. And then when you're in the game, how much is too much? That's a balance that you're yes. gonna have to figure out for yourself. 
So guys, make sure you diversify your portfolio and you'll be ready for any type of recession or downturn. So influencer marketing is on the rise. And look, if you're starting to get brand deals, it's because you were authentic in the first place. Then you start to get sponsored mm -hmm. and maybe that authenticity begins to dilute a little bit. So curious for your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about sponsored content? How much is too much? And what's that perfect blend between organic and sponsored? Posts. <laughs> 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 all right guys thank you for watching this episode of chop it up only on 137 p.m and let's keep the conversation going offline let us know what you want more of or what you want less of and as usual make some fucking bread i don't oh know my god I until don't next know. week I don't peace know. all right guys peace. until next week peace like are you serious you missed it you should have done until next week Ready? You gotta go. I just, I said and, and then you say. We're actually rolling and using this. Oh my God. All right, here we go. Until next week. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>